All right, according to the magical thing, we are live, so uh, let's get a going. Good afternoon. I'm Baldy and Chief here at the Texas Storm Chasers. David Reimer, we've got a new tornado warning. This is going to be for portions of Harris and Montgomery counties until 4.30 p.m. This does include the city of Humble. So let's get into it. Okay, we've got a circulation spinning up over Alding. This is going to be near or just east of 548, a bit south of uh, Tollway 8. And you can see a pretty good circulation spinning up right here. It's going to be a tornado warning until 4.30 p.m. Let's go over the cities. This does include Aldine, uh, includes areas just north of Mount Houston. This does definitely include Houston Inter Bush Intercontinental Airport. This does include uh, Westfield. This includes Kingwood. This includes uh, Humble. So, again, this is going to be a tornado warning in southeast Texas, just north of the Houston metro. Uh, this is actually just south of Houston Bush Intercontinental Airport. This is going to be a circulation spinning up near Aldine. So, tornado warning means lowest floor, center room, away from windows, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. This does not include the city of Houston. This is north of Houston. Uh, this does include interstate uh, 69, roughly from uh, the Beltway on the northeast side of town, Tollway 8, all the way up through about Highway 99, just south of Wood Branch. So this is going to be a pretty good look in circulation, trying to spin up. Let's go ahead and turn the telestrate, or excuse me, the uh, road tool on. Since we're so close to a radar site, we'll just go ahead and label some roads. It's going to be John F. Kennedy Boulevard. We've got State Loop 8. This is going to be just northeast of Spur 548, moving northeast at about 30 miles an hour. So pretty good looking circulation. You've got winds in red moving away from the radar site, which is located down in Dickinson, or Dix, yeah. Dickinson. Um, winds moving away from the radar about 40 miles an hour. Winds moving towards the radar about 30. So we've got about 70 to 80 mile an hour uh, low level rotation with this circulation. We'll switch back over to the reflectivity. You can see a pretty good looking storm structure. It's not your classic supercell. We're not dealing with those today. What we do have is a clear hook echo. This is going to be your inflow notch just north of uh, John F. Kennedy, or coming up on John F. Kennedy Boulevard near State Loop 8. You've got your rear flank downdraft just east of the Alting City label. That's where you've got winds coming down on the back side of the thunderstorm. Again, switch back over to the which way the wind's blowing mode, and there you go. You've got a good gate-to-gate -gate circulation. Winds in the red moving away from the radar about 45 miles an hour. Winds moving towards the radar about 30, about 70 to 80 mile an hour, gate to gate, shear. Volume is low, you say. Well, let's go ahead and see if we can't fix that. See if that helps at all. So again, probable tornado developing now coming up on JFK Boulevard near State Loop 8. This is in Alding coming up on the south side of Houston Bush Intercontinental World Air or yeah. Intercontinental Airport. Did I put this as the wrong date? I did. My apologies. This is right now. This is today. This is the 8th of January 2022. Jason, if you're listening, fix it for me, please. Thank you. Okay, so again, this is right now. This is a possible tornado developing near JFK Boulevard and State Loop 8, Alding. Latest radar scan just came in. This is going to be the south side of Houston Bush Intercontinental World Airport. One of the main entrance roads heading north into the airport from State Loop 8. We'll switch on the debris tracker. We'd be looking for a blue donut in the 
vastness of the red and yellows, and we don't see any, so that's good. We're not seeing signs of debris being lofted. Again, if there's debris being lofted, we have a tornado down because a tornado is just an updraft. It sucks things up, so if the radar detects debris, well, obviously there's a tornado down because, well, yeah. So we're waiting for the latest velocity update to come on in from the radar, but it does look like based on some other data I'm seeing, we probably do have a tornado trying to spin up right now over JFK Boulevard near or just north of State Loop 8. I'm going to try and load a different radar real quick. This is using an experimental tool, so sometimes it gets a little mad at me and crashes everything, but, you know, what's the fun in life if you don't take a little risk, right? So let me go ahead, we'll switch on that product, see if it works. And yeah, you can see that this is a terminal Doppler weather radar site uh, for the Houston Bush Intercontinental Airport. This is to detect wind shear, but it's also very good at detecting low-level circulations. Winds moving away from that radar about 30 miles an hour. You've got winds moving towards the radar at about 30. So if we have a tornado it would likely be right there very near state loop 8 just north or very near john f kennedy boulevard so folks in the proximity of houston bush intercontinental airport alden you need to be in shelter humble you need to be in shelter westfield especially east of interstate 45 coming up to kingwood you're in the tornado warning the tornado warning is this big red box. We'll go ahead and show you. Let's zoom out and see. Let me turn that off. We'll go back and show you. Let me turn off the severe warnings. Tornado warning is this red blinky box of doom. It does include Humble. Technically includes Kingwood, east side of Westfield. It does include north, just north of Mount Houston. If you're on the east side of Aldine, you need to be in shelter. If you're along and west of Interstate 45, this isn't going to be an issue for you. You're fine, at least from this specific storm. Uh, if you're at Houston Bush Intercontinental Airport, well, this is very near or just southeast of the airport. We'll switch back on the velocity, see if it's actually updating. It's not off that product. That's fine. We'll switch back over to our usual product. You'll be able to see the radar, this hook echo, and the associated velocity couplet just southeast of the airport or very near the airport uh, right now i'm quite confident in that there is no flights arriving or departing from uh bush intercontinental at the moment we'll check the debris tracker and i'll check a different product on my end just to make sure we don't have any sort of mischief showing up uh Honestly, I can't rule that out, being a little tornado debris signature right there. It's a weak one, if it is, which is good, but as we switch back over to the tip of the hook, you switch over to storm relative velocity, and there might be a little debris being lofted right there at JFK Boulevard and uh, near just north of State Loop 8. So we may have had a brief tornado touchdown, which is generally the expectations for today. We're not expecting long-lived, significant tornadoes that stay down for many minutes or many miles we're expecting relatively brief spin-up tornadoes that are on the weak side that being said a tornado is a tornado and if you have one coming down your street today it doesn't matter if it's an ef0 ef1 or an ef4 ef5 it's going to be a big deal uh weak tornadoes can essentially it can still take off your roof still throw stuff around folks who have christmas decorations out they're gonna end up halfway to beaumont probably if you have a tornado coming down your street and of course you have flying debris which becomes deadly shrapnel even in weak tornadoes that's the biggest danger frankly is flying debris that can cause lacerations or worse so at 4 p.m a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado is located over bush intercontinental airport specifically the south southeast sides of the airport uh this storm is moving northeast at 30 miles per hour going to be near kingwood and porter heights around 4 15 p.m central time so again those of you in humble you need to be in your safe place that's going to be the lowest floor set of room away from windows you put as many walls between you and the outside as possible.
put on some hard sole shoes. You don't want to be going around in flip flops. Uh, if you have a tornado come down your street, trust me, flip flops. You don't want to be stepping on debris and that stuff. But hopefully, this isn't a long term issue. I do think, based on some radar signatures I saw, we probably did have a brief tornado spin up very near. Uh, JFK Boulevard near Loop 8, south side of Intercontinental Airport, about five minutes ago. As this circulation continues moving northeast, let's go ahead and put a couple of road labels on it. It's going to be Will Clayton Boulevard, or, or excuse me, Will Clayton Parkway. You've obviously got the Interstate 69. This is coming up to Bender Road, just north of Loop 8. You've got Rankin Road. We'll go ahead and put a label on that. You've got Old Humble Road at the moment. Circulation is coming up to Kenswick Drive. You've got Lee Road. Coming up to Will Clayton Parkway between, well, frankly, Intercontinental Airport and Interstate 69. So if there's a tornado down, it's likely coming up to Will Clayton Parkway, in proximity of it at least, near Lee Road. And then north of uh, Will Clayton Parkway, it turns into Kendrick Drive. And this is one of the main roads going in and out of Intercontinental Airport if you're coming in from Interstate 69, east side of the airport from Humble. So if you're in Humble, you need to be in your safe place. Again, that's lowest floor, center room, away from windows. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. I'm hopeful, based on some uh, radar data I'm seeing, we're starting to see the circulation broaden out. When you have a very tight circulation, we call it gate to gate. It's where you have bright red against bright green pixels on this radar display. That's where you have a gate to gate circulation. It's like about, think of a ballerina, a skater on an ice rink. When they bring their arms in and can they can start spinning faster. I know I'm verbalizing this poorly, but let's be honest, I wasn't exactly expecting to be doing this today. And I need more coffee. So my apologies if I'm not verbalizing this particularly well, but you bring your arms in as a ballerina or a skater, a ballerina or as a skater, and you're able to spin even faster. Same principle goes for uh, rotation here in thunderstorms. So when this broadened out, it's usually a good sign that the threat for a tornado, at least an imminent tornado, is starting to lower. That being said, the storm's still spinning like a top. And a tornado warning's in place through 4.30 p.m., so you have to respect that. If you're in Humble, you're in Kingwood, you're in Porter Heights, you need to be in your safe place. This circulation's going to be coming up to Humble-Huffman Road shortly. An FM 1960. Near Interstate 69, you need to respect that. So... We'll switch back over to the which way the winds, or excuse me, the how hard it's raining mode. We'll zoom out and we'll take a broader look at what's going on. Let me turn on severe warning so you can actually see all of that as well. We'll turn on some storm tracks. You can see the only other storm that is currently severe is this thunderstorm coming up towards Dayton. And this storm actually produced a, probably produced a tornado about 30, 40 minutes ago uh, near Laporte. It was warned it had a very good circulation for a few minutes on radar, much like the thunderstorm near Bush Intercontinental did, uh, which may have produced a tornado back around uh, John F. Kennedy Boulevard in Loop 8 about 10 minutes ago. This storm moving northeast towards Dane is capable of producing damaging straight line winds, at least localized, of 60 miles an hour. And we're keeping an eye on it for some rotation. It's got weak rotation. And, I mean, all these storms today are spinning aloft. There's a, plenty of wind shear in place. Uh, the other ingredients that would support tornado genesis are marginal. 
but obviously there, so that's why we're dealing with the threat for a few brief, weak tornado spin-ups. But we'll keep an eye on these storms today and through the afternoon. Again, we're not expecting these to be long-lived tornado producers that constantly have tornadoes down for dozens of minutes or dozens of miles. These are more of the hopscotch variety where we may have a tornado down for 30, 60 seconds, maybe a mile, uh, maybe tens of yards wide and generally on the weak side, uh, capable of t causing roof damage, knocking fences down, you know, stuff like that. Uh, I don't mean to make it sound chalant or not important because it certainly is. A tornado is a tornado and anything that becomes airborne instantly becomes shrapnel, debris, being projected at violent speeds. Uh, for example, if a tornado takes a fence out, you've got pieces of wood flying around. You get hit by a piece of wood flying around, that's going to cause you great bodily harm in all likelihood. So you need to treat it seriously, and that's why we tell you on the go to your lowest floor, center room, get as many walls between you and the outside as possible, and especially go into an interior room with no windows. We don't want you getting injured by flying debris, and that includes flying glass. So, again, a area of broadened out rotation coming up on Interstate 69 now near FM 1960 in Humble. If you're at Bush Intercontinental Airport, give it about five more minutes. If you're in the terminals, you'll be good to go. This will be off to your east. Uh, I doubt they're going to have flights going in and out for a little while. So, uh, in all likelihood, we may have had a brief tornado touchdown just south, southeast of Bush Intercontinental Airport. This, again, would be... To the this would have been about a mile south southeast of the passenger terminals. That being said, any aircraft that may have been waiting to depart off uh, run one of the uh, one fives, as I call them, uh, may have had an interesting view. Uh, the pilots, at least. So. That being said, this is the only tornado warning. If you're in Alding, you're clear. Uh, this is now northeast of you, Alding. It's pouring rain. And keep in mind, actually, we're going to have to keep an eye out for some street flooding across northern, northeastern Harris County. Uh, specifically, Jeff Linder with the Harris County Flood Control District just mentioned that we've got two to in three inches of rain today across northeastern Harris County and Liberty County. Uh, we're seeing some rise water levels rising on Loose Bayou in Liberty County. Uh, but at this point, no significant flooding is expected. Again, two to three inches of rain is... Notable, but I mean, this is Houston. We get three inches of rain in 20 minutes in the summer. So, uh, as long as we didn't have three inches of rain in 20 minutes, so far we're okay. So, again, some minor street flooding and minor rises on the bayous and the uh, flood control system streams are likely. Uh, I'm hopeful, hopeful we'll be able to get rid of this tornado warning near Humble soon. The good news is, again, the circulation, I mean, the storm's still spinning like a top, mind you, and we're watching it, but it, for the last 10 minutes or so, we haven't seen the circulation tighten up. I'm looking at a different radar product, and let's see if I can actually get it shown here again, or if the angry mean, yeah, it's one and done for me. Let's see, unless I can get the data to load. I'm looking at uh, almost live instantaneous radar data from the uh, terminal Doppler weather radar from the Intercontinental Airport. The circulation over Humble has broadened out considerably over the last few minutes, meaning the threat for at least there being a tornado down this second is lower compared to about 15 minutes ago when we probably did have a tornado touchdown briefly around uh, John F. Kennedy Boulevard and Loop 8 just south of Intercontinental Airport. That being said, this thing's still got a pretty good circulation that's just broad. Greens are winds heading out, or winds heading towards the weather radar, which is down in Dickinson, just southeast of Houston. At about 20 miles an hour, you've got winds moving away at about 40, so about 60 miles an hour of rotation over about a, well, let's just say a half mile to mile area. No doubt this thing has a probably a visually impressive rotating wall cloud. Uh, it probably looks pretty visually ominous if it's not shrouded in rain. 
And, I mean, reflectivity, structure, storm speaking. Let's try that again. Speaking in terms of the storm structure and reflectivity, I mean, you can definitely tell it's still an organized circulation. This is the air flow coming into the circulation. Notice how it's kind of cleared out some of the rain from near Will Clayton Parkway up to FM 1960. The rain the intensity is lower. That's because the storm's sucking in air, warm, unstable air. On the back side, you've got your clear hook echo right here. That's where winds are coming down on the back side of the circulation. It's called a rear flank downdraft, and that's where you've got west gusty winds coming on the back side of the circulation. You switch back over to the which way the wind's blowing mode, and there you go. Greens are winds moving towards the radar down in Dickinson, so you've got your west winds. And then you've got your inflow winds shown in red. Those are your south-southeast winds hanging up into the thunderstorm, being sucked in by the thunderstorm and the parent mesocyclone and the circulation. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and back out. I'm going to turn off the radar data. Let's go over what we have. We have a tornado warning through 4.30 p.m., uh, this does include Humble, Moonshine Hill, Kingwood. If you were at Intercontinental Airport, you're clear. This circulation is now to your northeast. If you're in Aldine, you're clear. This circulation is to your northeast and moving away. If you're in Spring, this is east of you, not a problem. And for a broader view, you can see the Houston, Houston itself, you're not in any warning at all. It's pouring, it's storming, you're fine. And we're watching a thunderstorm a bit further east near Dickinson, where we have a severe thunderstorm warning until, oh, let's say 4.30 p.m. That includes, uh, well, Southwestern Liberty and Dickinson. We'll switch back on the how hard it's a rain in mode. You can see this thunderstorm, like the one to its west, is showing signs of rotation just because it's got a little hook echo. We'll switch over to the which way the wind's blowing mode, and yeah, it's got some broad rotation. We're watching it, so it's under a severe storm warning. It could produce a brief tornado, uh, but at this point, the circulation is not intense enough to warrant a tornado warning. And again, this is going to be the name of the game today. All these showers and storms are rotating aloft. There's plenty of wind shear in place, but rotation aloft doesn't really matter as long as it doesn't become rotation at the surface, also known as a tornado. So, we're watching them. That's what we do. Again, we're not expecting long-lived tornadoes today, the kind that are going to level your house or anything, but you're still going to have to treat them seriously. Uh, starting to see indications, the circulation crossing near FM 1960, just east of Interstate 69, may actually be starting to tighten up again. Uh, if we have a tornado, well, it looks like they just updated the warning. At 4.13 p.m., a severe thunderstorm is capable of producing a tornado near Porter Heights or near Kingwood, moving northeast at 30 miles an hour. Again, this is going to be just northeast of Interstate 69, just northeast of FM 1960, moving northeast towards Kingwood. Let me go ahead. We'll get some additional streets put on your screen. It's going to be Kingwood Drive. North Park Drive, it's going to be West Lace Lake Houston Parkway, and Kingwood. And it does look like we're going to have a tornado warning for Dickinson, so we'll go ahead and look at velocity on this real quick. If you're in um, Kingwood, you need to be in your safe place. Uh, potential for a tornado may be increasing now. Uh, just about maybe a mile north of FM 1960, about a mile or two east of Interstate 69, moving northeast towards Kingwood and Kingwood Drive. We could have a tornado trying to develop again, but we now have a new tornado warning. This is going to be for uh, Dayton specifically. So let's go ahead and switch back over to the how hard it's a raining mode. We'll take a look. This tornado warning is going to include... Let me turn off the severe warning, make it a little easier to see. Let's turn off the radar so you can see the warning polygon. This new tornado warning is going to include Dickinson, or excuse me, not Dickinson, Dayton, Stilson, West Liberty, Kenfick, or Kenefick. Uh, it comes up to almost Dayton Lakes, okay? It's going to be a tornado warning until 4.45 p.m. We'll just read the warning text real quick. A severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado located just southwest of Dayton, moving north at 20 to 30 miles an hour. 
The storm is going to be near Dane at 4.35 p.m. Western Liberty and Kennefick around 4.45 p.m. So let's go ahead. We'll zoom on. We'll switch the data back on. And you can see, yeah, we do have an inflow notch with this thunderstorm. You can see the little hook echo. It's not your classic super-duper scary rappy hook of doom, but it's still a clear-cut indication of low-level rotation with this thunderstorm. Rotation-wise, it's not the clearest-cut circulation. But, nevertheless, this storm did produce a tornado about 45 minutes ago back near Laporte. My apologies, I was just looking at a photo of it back when it was near Laporte in all likelihood. Uh, we just retweeted it on Twitter. And those of you watching on our website or mobile app, you can click on the Rapid Update link in our menu and you'll see that photo too. So, we now have two tornado warnings. We'll switch back over to the How Hard It's Raining mode. Let's zoom out. First off, Galveston, Port Arthur, Beaumont. You have some rain in your area. No tornado warnings. We have two tornado warnings right now with storms moving north at about 20 to 30 miles an hour. First tornado warning is with a thunderstorm coming up on Kingwood. Kingwood, you need to be in your safe place. Second tornado warning storm is coming up to Dayton. These are both northeast of Houston, moving away from Houston. Uh, Kingwood... Tornado warning number one, tornado warning number two near Dayton, coming up to Kennefick and West Liberty. If you're in Liberty, Kennefick, Dayton, tornado warning until 445, tornado safety precautions. No wood, excuse me, Kingwood, tornado warning until 430, although at this point the circulation intensifying again, it's going to likely be extended upstream, meaning those of you in Wood Branch, Plum Grove, Splendora, you may be under a tornado warning in the next several minutes. Get ready. Switching over to the which way the winds are blowing mode. You can see we do have a pretty good circulation spinning up now. This is going to be coming up into Kingwood. Uh, Kingwood, for some reason, the city level is not showing up on my radar display program. But we've got the uh, city name, at least, lined out with a road. Kingwood coming up to, oh, it's going to be Woodland Hills Drive. This is likely coming up there shortly. And here's the latest scan. The circulation approaching Kingwood Drive and Woodland Hills Drive in the next one to two minutes. Understand, this is not going to be a situation where I want you judging where this is street by street. I'm just trying to give you a, ge a general relative area. So understand, if you're in Kingwood, you should have been at shelter 15 minutes ago. Your phones probably went off, jumping off like crazy, making all sorts of freaky sounds. And if they didn't, you turned off your emergency alert system notices on your phone, which you shouldn't have done, because those can tell you when there's a tornado in your area. Turn them back on. So again, tornado warning number one through at least 430 uh, if there is a tornado, it's wrapped in rain. That's worth noting. This is likely going to be a rain-wrapped circulation. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping. So give me just a second. For those of you joining us, good afternoon. I'm David Reimer with the Texas Storm Chasers. It's 4.20 in the afternoon on the 8th of January, 2022. We have tornado warning just north and northeast of the Houston Metro. Tornado warning number one near Kingwood. That's northeast of Humble. Uh, may have had a brief tornado just south of Intercontinental Airport about 20 to 30 minutes ago. Tornado warning number two near Dayton. These storms are moving north at about 20 to 30 miles an hour and are capable of producing brief tornadoes. Uh, it's worth noting the circulation coming up on Kingwood, if there's a tornado, is going to likely be wrapped in rain. It can, also known as if a tornado occurs, you're not going to see it, or it's just going to look like an area of heavy rain visually. So if you're in Kingwood, lowest floor, center room, away from windows, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Dayton, same thing. Now, Dayton, this circulation is likely going to pass just west and north of town. If you're in Dayton proper, maintain or stay in shelter for another 10 minutes. Liberty, I think this is going to stay west of you. 
That being said, keep an eye on it. But Liberty, I think this is going to stay enough far enough west from you. You're going to be okay. If you're in Kenefic, you're in the tornado warning. You need to be in your safe place. So again, two tornado warnings. That's all we have right now. We've got some rain down in Houston. It's raining. It's storming. That is not going to be tornadic in any shape, way, or form. And for those of you wanting to keep up with what's going on here or in your neck of the woods, we've got interactive weather radar on our website, texasstormchasers.com slash radar, or you can just download our free mobile app, Texas Storm Chasers, on the Google Play and Apple Store, App Store, and the radar is included on that app, and it's free. So again, short-term trends, circulation near Kingwood starting to wrap up again. And I'm going to actually do something here. You're going to lose radar for just a second. I'm going to restart the program because I want to show you what I'm looking at. And yeah, the live post says January 2nd. I'm sorry. It's actually January 8th. And I'm trying to get the radar to restart, but it doesn't want to. Oh, don't you love technology? My apologies. I'm having to actually uh, force kill the radar program now because it's a little upset at me. So again, I know you can only see a little box of my shiny bald head at the moment. We have a tornado warning near uh, Kingwood and a tornado warning near Dayton. And I'm not sure why the radar program's not restarting. Interesting. Okay, well, if the radar program's not going to restart, we'll just have to uh, wing it with something else. So, we'll do that. So be it. One moment, please. Let me get it back on. Huh. I'm actually not sure why I can't get a radar program to display. I'm sorry. This is great. All right. My apologies. There we go. So we're just going to have to wing it. I apologize, but not your typical radar display program, but we're just going to have to make it work since technology and I can't get along at the moment. So this is going to be a circulation coming up to no or Kingwood right now. This is Kingwood Drive, about two miles east of Highway 59, Interstate 69. This is a circulation near Kingwood. Uh, this is using the terminal Doppler weather radar out of Intercontinental Airport. So those of you in Kingwood, you need to be in shelter as the circulation continues to tighten up, as we call it, increasing the probability we have the a brief tornado spin up over the next several minutes. For those of you in Kingwood, you need to be in your safe place. We have a tornado warning now that goes upstream. This includes Plum Grove, north of Huffman, north of Eastgate. We have a tornado warning near uh, north of Dayton. And we'll switch back over to the how hard a draining mode. See circulation north of Dayton, northwest of Dayton by about two miles. This is going to be near moving near Kenefic. We have a broad circulation showing up here. 
we have a stronger circulation showing up near Kingwood. This is going to be very near Woodland Hills Drive and Kingwood Drive, moving closer to North Park Drive and Lake Houston Parkway within the next 10 minutes. We'll switch over to the debris mode. We'd be looking for a little blue donut, and we don't see one, so we don't see debris being lofted at the moment. That doesn't necessarily mean we don't have a to brief tornado down. It just means, well, we don't have debris being lofted to a height of where the radar would see it. Still trying to get the pretty graphical radar to come back. I don't know why it won't start. I'm looking. To see, but there's, I literally don't see us. Oh, there we go. Kill that process a few times, I might be able to get the radar back. Okay, so we'll see if it loads. If it does, and it is, you'll see it pop back up. So I can do that, and you'll actually see the pretty radar pop back up, I believe. Maybe, or it won't show up on here now. Let me see. Ah, technology. It really is a very annoying thing. Okay, good enough. So at least we got the pretty radar to come back. I call it the pretty radar. My apologies. So let me go ahead. We'll zoom back over to Kingwood. We're going to switch over to the re or the which way the wind's blowing mode. And we're going to look at two things. First, circulation just north of Dayton. Dayton, you, you should be in shelter even though the circulation's likely to pass just to your north. Audio levels are low. Okay. My apologies. Let me see if I can't fix that. Do, 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 do. Let me see. Did that do anything? Probably not. Well, that's probably going to be a lot louder now. I apologize, but at least now you should be able to hear me a little more clearly. If you had your speakers up, I'm sorry. I'm going to try and speak really softly for a minute before I go back to a normal voice. Okay, we have two tornado warnings. One's going to be north of Dayton. One is going to be near the city of Kingwood. Storm north of Dayton. Dayton, give it another five minutes. This will be well north of town. If you're in Dayton proper, five more minutes go about your day. If you're in Kennefake, you should be in shelter. Those of you in Dane Lakes, over to... Uh, eventually, this might pass uh, near Moss Hill, which is at 105 and 146, if this takes a little more of a right turn. Otherwise, those of you near and just west of Dane Lakes, you need to be in your safe place. Kingwood. Uh, storm obviously looks like a blob, but when we switch over to the which way the wind's blowing mode, you'll see we do have a decent little circulation. Pop on the debris mode. We'd be looking for signs of debris that would show up as a blue, essentially a blue uh, circle, a blue donut in the midst of the red. This product allows us to see shapes and sizes of objects that the radar is seeing aloft that may not be the same size. So raindrops, hailstones, at least in a very small region, are generally the same shape and size. So that shows up as a high correlation coefficient, same shape and size. That shows up as red on this display, which is all you're seeing right now. If we had pieces of debris, whether it be a tree limb, leaves, pieces of a 
shingles, you know, fences, those are different shapes and sizes that would show up on this product as blue or lower correlation coefficient. Uh, that's what we'd be looking for, a blue donut in the midst of a sea of red. We're not seeing that, so that's good. Uh, switch over to the Which Way the Wind's Blowing mode, and generally a br broad circulation does continue. Let me set my displays up again. My apologies. I've got like seven monitors around me, which is why I keep looking around. I promise I'm not just trying to look away from y'all. So, again, two potential tornado, tornadic circulations that could produce brief, weak tornadoes. One, Kingwood. Two, a couple miles north of Dayton. In fact, if we want to be more specific, probably about four miles north of Dayton near Highway 321, moving towards Kennefic. Uh, if we want to talk about the more impressive storm... Frankly, five minutes ago, it was the storm over Kingwood. Now it's the storm near Kennefic, moving towards Kennefic. This one is uh, ramping up in terms of circulation. So those of you in Kennefic, north of Dayton, you need to take your tornado safety precautions. That'll be the lowest floor, center room, away from windows, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Uh, you don't want to be near windows, obviously, and we don't want you going outside looking for it. It's probably wrapped in rain, and, uh, well, nothing good happens from rain-wrapped tornadoes. So, again, we're not dealing with long track significant tornadoes today. We're dealing with these situations where we have tornadoes playing hopscotch. It may be down for 20, 30 seconds, maybe a mile maybe 10, 20, 30 yards wide, capable of producing lower-end tornado damage, but that's still capable of causing bodily harm. If, for example, uh, you have pieces of a fence get picked up by the tornado, and that starts flying, breaks a window, glass cuts you, that's how people get hurt. And we don't want anyone in uh, trailers, mobile homes, even weak tornadoes can destroy mobile homes and trailers. It doesn't matter if it's tied down or not. It's just the name of the game. They're absolutely great housing, but they just don't do well in severe weather. Whether it be 70 to 80 mile an hour straight line winds or a 70 to 80 mile an hour tornado, doesn't matter. They don't do well. So that's why we don't want folks in vehicles, trailers, or mobile homes in significant severe weather and tornadoes. We'll switch back over to, oh, well, there we go. We've got a new tornado warning, and this is going to be a confirmed tornado, apparently. We've got a, what the weather service in Houston is calling a confirmed tornado now, near Kennefic, or north of Dayton, moving north at 25 miles an hour. So this is going to be a tornado warning until 5 p.m. This tornado warning does include Moss Hill. It includes Highway 105, roughly from the um, 321 split on the west side east to Moss Hill, which is not showing up on this map city label system, but it's where 105 and 146 meet up. I'm going to actually try and get the road labels to show up a little more frequently, so give me just a second. Okay, so, uh, tornado warning, Kennefic Dane Lakes, you need to be in your safe place, Moss Hill, where 105 and 146 meet up, I'll just draw it on the screen. Moss Hill right there. You need to be in your safe place. Again, where 105 and 146 intersect. Possible tornado, if not a tornado down. Apparently, the Weather Service in Houston has received confirmation there's a tornado as they indicate this is a confirmed tornado. So, circulation number one over Kingwood, capable of producing a brief tornado, but a storm number two with what is likely a tornado down about four miles north of Dade, moving towards Kennefic. 
Let's go ahead. We'll switch over to the How Hard It's Raining mode. And you can see, yeah, we've got a hook echo. We'll switch over to the debris tracker. I don't see indications of debris on radar, at least nothing that I would conclusively indicate a tornado actually lofting debris. But uh, the weather service in Houston apparently is indicating there is a tornado, or at least was within the last few minutes. So with that being said, those of you in Kennefic and Dane Lakes, you need to be in your safe place. This could be a tornado wrapped in rain, in which case you're not going to see it. It's just going to look like a bunch of heavy rain spinning around. Kennefic, this tornado, if it's down, and apparently it is, is going to be very near your area now. Dane Lakes, you've probably got five to ten minutes, but don't wait on it. Go ahead and seek shelter. And eventually, this will be moving upstream to uh, Moss Lake, which is 105 and where 146 intersect. All right, I am going to open some chats. One moment, please. All right, just have to do, 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 do. All right, that. Uh. Sorry, sometimes I have to do housekeeping stuff, and that's just when you see me sit here like this. Okay. And for those of you wondering, I upgraded this production machine to Windows 11 a few days ago, and uh, it's never fun upgrading production machines. Oh, look, it's the sound of cows. Okay, at 4.16 p.m., we had a public report of a tornado located near Dayton, so that was about 25 minutes ago. Uh, anyone from TSC listening, check the uh, Facebook fan group, see if we have any pictures of that posted by anybody. Uh, tornado now likely located near Kennefic, if one is down. Circulation looks a little broader now on radar. Uh, this will be moving near Dayton Lakes within the next 5 to 10 minutes. The time now is 4.39 p.m. the 8th of January, 2022. I'm Texas Storm Chasers Baldy and Chief David Reimer. We've had thunderstorms produce at least two brief tornadoes over the last one hour. Uh, north, well, actually, I'm sorry, I think we're up to three. Uh, we had a brief tornado near Laporte. We had a brief tornado just south of Intercontinental Airport. And now we've apparently, at least in the last 30 minutes, have had a brief tornado produced by this thunderstorm, which is now about four miles north of Dayton, located near Kennefic, coming up to Dayton Lakes. We thank all those who are watching us this afternoon. We're live streaming on multiple platforms. It is the 8th of January, by the way, not the 2nd. Like I said, it's uh, first live streams of the year can often be a bit uh, like uh, brushing off the rust, brushing off the dust, whatever the phraseology is. Same goes for me. So it's not the 2nd, it's the 8th. Uh, thanks for watching on... We're live on Texas Storm Chasers on Facebook, Texas Storm Chasers on YouTube, Texas Storm Chasers on Twitter, and we're also live on our content partners, Tornado Intercept. So we thank you for joining us this afternoon. You can keep an eye on all the storms 
whether it's in Texas or across the country with the interactive weather radar on the Texas Storm Chasers website, texasstormchasers.com slash live, or just search for Texas Storm Chasers radar on your search engine, or better yet, download our free mobile app, Texas Storm Chasers. It's in the Google Play Store and in the Apple App Store. Our app is awesome, free interactive radar. You can download our app and keep up with us, especially as we move forward into 2022. We have some very exciting things coming about. We've got a lot. We've added several chasers over the winter. We're going to have a lot of live streaming video this spring. Once the spring tornado season gets started and the chasers get out and about, we're going to have a lot of live video. And of course, me. I mean, come on. You can't have Texas tornado coverage without Baldy and Chief. You can, but... And we will. All right. Good news. Looks like the tornado warning for Kingwood has been canceled. Tornado warning for Harris, Liberty, Montgomery counties is gone. We're down to one tornado warning now, and it's going to be the tornado warning for Kennefick and Dayton Lakes. Thank you, Mr. Cooley. So again, yeah, we've had a lot of folks join us over the winter, and we have a solid amazing chase team set up, and a team of meteorologists. I myself am not a meteorologist, for the record. I never have called myself one. You can only be a meteorologist if you graduate from a accredited university or college. I myself am not. I have not. So, looks like we now have a tornado watch that's just been issued. We'll have details on that shortly, but I assume it's going to run through, looks like 11 p.m., for a good chunk of southeast Texas. I'll go ahead and pop the tab on there. So, oh no, I'm sorry, not 11 p.m., 10 p.m. I'm assuming it's daytime or daylight savings. So, we do. Tornado Watch includes the Houston Metro over to Beaumont, Port Arthur, up north to Center, and Nacogdoches, Lufkin. And again, we'll show that Tornado Watch here in our graphic system once it pops on in. So, again, today's general expectation is we're going to keep watching these isolated thunderstorms for brief spin-up tornadoes. We're not expecting long-lived tornadoes to touch down and wreak havoc over tens of miles or the kind of tornadoes that level houses. But again, you have to treat every tornado warning seriously. It doesn't matter if it's a one minute spin up or like we saw in Kentucky last month, a four hour quad state supercell dropping EF4, EF5 tornadoes over the span of 300 miles. So, and that brings us up to an interesting point about the Enhanced Fujita scale. It is a damage scale. Tornado, the Enhanced Fujita scale rates damage. It doesn't necessarily rate tornadoes per se. It rates the damage left behind. So uh, you can have a, a mile wide tornado down for two hours in the middle of Kansas. But if all it does is stay over uh, unpopulated fields and knock some power poles over, it's going to be rated an EF1 tornado. So uh Again, the Enhanced Fujita Scale has plenty of limitations, and one of them is that it uses damage, not necessarily scientific observations such as mobile radar. So, uh, keep that in mind. So again, Tornado Warning continues through 5 p.m. This is going to include Moss Hill, which is the intersection of Highway 146 and 105 near Kennefick. So let's turn off, I'm going to turn everything off the radar. We're going to look up. Let me go ahead. This is the new tornado watch, shaded in yellow. This runs through 10 p.m. this evening. Tornado watch number 13. This includes a majority of southeast Texas, the Piney Woods of East Texas, and the Golden Triangle. It includes the Houston Metro. It includes Huntsville. It does not include Bryan College Station, so it's the eastern Brazos Valley. It runs all the way north up to Nacogdoches and center at East Texas, including Lufkin, Corrigan, Browndale, Hemphill, Jasper, Kirbyville, Lumberton. It includes all of the Golden Triangle, including Beaumont and Port Arthur. And now I'm going to be a bad little host and actually check my cell phone for a couple things because that's what I do. And I almost started singing. 
we're going to forego that. So that is the tornado watch until 10 p.m. this evening. The potential for a few brief tornadoes. Okay, we'll get rid of that. And actually, that's a good point, guys. Uh, when's the last time we had a tornado watch issued with uh, level 1 risk? The Storm Prediction Center's got these areas all outlined in a level 1 out of 5 risk for severe weather, which means isolated coverage, which typically does not warrant a severe weather watch. So, that's interesting. Uh, we have a tornado watch issued for areas in a level 1 risk. It's just a little observation I thought was interesting. Alright, let me get this stuff turned back on. We'll turn that on. Again, this was earlier. This is a local storm report from about 4.16. Uh, report of a tornado at 4.16 by the public uh, southwest of Dayton with this thunderstorm that is coming up to Dayton Lakes and Kennefick. We'll switch over to the which way the wind's blowing mode, and you can see it's not as organized as it was earlier, which is good. This is spawned out. Again, this is not a day where we expect uh, tornadoes to stay down for long periods of time. It's more like uh, storms produce tornadoes for a couple minutes, cycle, and then if it's able to cycle, it may try to do it again a few minutes later. So most of the time, we're going to be keeping an eye on the sky. And watching for these pop-up circulations. That's a good question. What does it take to be a meteorologist? Well, technically, you need to be, have at least a... Oh, I wish we had a Jason or Trey on here, and they could actually answer that. But typically, you need to go to at least a two- to four-year college and get a degree in meteorology. It typically will involve a lot of math, physics, a lot of equations... Uh, a lot of different classes. I myself have not taken most of those classes, so I can't tell you the mathematical equation to calculate CAPE, which is Convective Available Potential Energy, which is another way of just saying the amount of instability. I can't tell you the mathematical equation to calculate the uh, one kilometer storm relative helicity or the energy helicity index. But I like to consider myself more of a communicator. I'm able to translate some of the technical jargon into less complex information that is understood by folks who aren't weather weenies. So whether or not I do a good job at that, that is up for y'all to decide. But I like to think I'm okay at it. But uh, some universities, uh, let's see, you've got uh, Texas Tech in Lubbock. You've got uh, Texas A&M in College Station. You've got the University of Oklahoma, Norman, Oklahoma. And there are a lot of other colleges out there that offer uh, meteorolo or atmospheric science degrees. And the University of Oklahoma is probably one of the most mathematically based programs out there. You have to be very good at math to survive getting through OU's meteorology program. Other universities don't focus on the mathematical equations as much. Um, it also depends which aspect of meteorology you're going into. Uh, operational meteorology versus, uh, say, research meteorology. Research meteorology, say you're trying to do a lot of research, yeah, you have to be pretty good at math. Operational meteorology, where... You're a broadcast meteorologist, you know, someone on the television, someone who might be going into the National Weather Service, stuff like that. Not as super heavy-handed with math. I mean, you still have to be good at math, mind you, but, you know, you don't have to be able to write out page-long formulas in your sleep. And again, that's actually a very good question. I'm going to have uh, Jason Cooley or Trey Greenwood, who are both uh, graduates from the University of Oklahoma, probably put something together on that. Jason's watching, so that's a good question. Thank you. Kingwood. Good question. Kingwood, the tornado warning was canceled at about 440. You're good to go. Kingwood, humble. No tornado warnings. Y'all can go about your day. We've got a single tornado warning for another 10 minutes near Dayton Lakes. 
moving northeast towards Moss Hill. And that's with a circulation that has occasionally produced brief tornadoes. I think it's produced at least two. We had a tornado southwest of Dane at about 415. And I think we've had a tornado near Laporte, southwest of Baytown, northwest of Shore Acres about an hour, hour and a half ago. Sorry, I'm just looking at some data. And folks, this is in southeast Texas. We're talking northeast of Houston. Uh, if you're wanting to know about areas in your part of the state of Texas, hop over to our interactive weather radar, texasstormchasers.com slash radar, or download the free Texas Storm Chasers mobile app in the Google Play or Apple App Store. You can have our free interactive weather radar there, and you can also watch our live coverage and follow along our rapid update feed. Again, I'm just looking at some data. What I'm going to do, actually, let me switch products here. And I'll put this in a loop, a one-hour loop, so you can see what's been going on. So this is just the radar looping over the last uh, two hours or so. You can see we've had a few tornado warnings initially back around Houston Intercontinental. Uh, now we've got a tornado warning north of Dayton. Dayton, by the way, Dayton, you're clear. This is north of town. Uh, circulation, if it's down, is going to be near or just west of Dayton Lakes, moving northeast towards Moss Hill. Tornado warning does run through 5 p.m., which is about another seven minutes. We'll see if the Weather Service in Houston extends it past that. And again, we're going to keep an eye on all these little beams, as we call them, these individual discrete-looking storms around southeast Texas. You can see we've got another one going up near Intercontinental Airport, or a bit west of Intercontinental Airport near Alding again. Uh, I'll look on my end. There's no signs of organized low-level rotation. Well, there's weak rotation with the cell going up near Alding right now, but it's not strong enough to be considered tornadic. Let me go ahead, we'll turn off the loop, we'll switch back over to the super duper high resolution radar. You can see this is what we're looking at near Aldine. Again, these areas had a tornado warning earlier. Uh, this is going to be a bit further southeast than the uh, storm that may have produced a tornado near JFK Boulevard and inner, or, uh, Loop 8 earlier. We'll switch over, look at the velocity. You can see it's got very weak velocity. It's not something I'd consider tornadic, but we're going to keep an eye on it. Again, these storms are in an environment capable of producing brief, weak tornadoes. We've got the storm north of Kennefick now, just west of Dane Lakes, moving north northeast at about 30 miles an hour. Unless this storm takes a hard right, it'll likely stay a bit west of uh, Moss Hill. Moving towards what well, almost looks like a subdivision. Let me go ahead. I'm going to put some streets on there. I'm also going to turn off the Telestrator because it's annoying me. And for those of you who may be more oriented with uh, streaming gear, I actually have a stream deck here. I haven't had a chance to program it yet, though. So, Okay, a little subdivision here. I'm just trying to get a label. Again, this is mainly... There we go. See, that makes life easier when you can find a subdivision and then 
uh, put some road labels. So again, this is going to be moving towards um, generally the areas that may include County Road 2306, uh, Cypress Lake Drive, Lakeview Drive, State Highway 105. This is going to be west of Moss Hill. It's, this circulation is generally heading in that direction. So that's where we want folks especially to be in shelter, and this could be near about 15 to 20 minutes away. And again, we're not expecting widespread severe weather tonight in southeast Texas. We're not expecting dozens of tornado warnings. But we do want folks to keep an eye out on the sky and be ready to act if we do end up having one of these little storms put down a brief tornado that requires a brief tornado warning. And the only tornado warning we have right now, the only severe weather warning we have in the state, is with this thunderstorm just northwest of Dayton Lakes moving towards Cypress Lake Drive and Highway 105 East, County Road 2306, which is several miles west of Moss Hill. And we'll see if the Weather Service does extend this tornado warning. Again, it expires at 5 p.m., which is now three minutes away in three, two, one. Um, Texas Storm Chasers, Baldy and Chief David Reimers, 4.57 p.m. on the 8th of January, 2022. Uh, we've got a tornado warning now north of Kennefick, northwest of Dayton Lake. Moving towards areas west of Moss Hill, generally speaking. Uh, County Road 2306, Highway 106 near Cypress Lake Drive. Storms moving northeast at about 30, north, northeast, excuse me, at about 30 miles per hour. We'll see if the tornado warning's extended. If it is, it'll go past five. If not, the tornado warning will be gone in two minutes, and we'll be able to take a quick breather. Keep an eye on things. I'm looking at our chats right now. For some reason, I'm only getting YouTube chats on here. On here, uh, Cammy, you're watching our live stream. That's a tornado watch until 10 p.m. for Southeast Texas. We'll go ahead and zoom out and look at that. This yellow box here shadings a tornado watch until 10 p.m. This does include the Houston Metro, it includes Beaumont, Port Arthur, it does include Lufkin, Nacogdoches, Hemp Hill, Center, Huntsville. And again, this is a tornado watch in the yellow box until 10 p.m. tonight. Potential for a few storms producing brief, weak tornadoes. We'll switch back on the warnings now. Can you tell I haven't talked this much in a while? voice is starting to go out a bit. So we'll see. Tornado warning technically expires in one minute. I say tornado warning or tornado watch. Tornado warning expires in one minute. I think that's what I said. All right. We'll see if they extend it. Otherwise, we've got a storm uh, near Alding again we're keeping an eye on. It's showing some weak rotation at this point, not strong enough to be considered tornadic, but given the environment the storm's in, given the fact we had a storm about 45 minutes to an hour ago produce a tornado near State Loop 8 and JFK Boulevard, uh, we're keeping an eye on it. I mean, it's out by itself, and it's kind of got a suspicious look to it so we'll keep an eye on it and see what happens otherwise the only tornado warning we have for three seconds is this storm near Dane lakes and the tornado warning is gone so at 5 p.m unless the weather service decides to issue another tornado warning which they haven't so far we are our tornado warning lists which is good so we could take more of a broadened out view I'm going to load some satellite data. Let's zoom out to the state of Texas. I'm just going to do a loop of three hours. My apologies. You'll have to give it just a second for the data to load. You'll see. This is what it looks like over the last three hours across Texas. Most of the state is dry. 
If I turn surface temperatures back on, you'll see it's actually been a pretty warm day across the state. Sorry, I'm changing. I'll just leave the font the way it is. How about that? See temperatures across the state. Uh, 70s. Looks like we had 80 down in McAllen, 72 in Amarillo, 60s, 70s across the state. It's been a pretty warm day. So with that being said, now that we're tornado warning lists, we'll go ahead and take a quick break. We'll come back if any new tornado warnings are issued. A tornado watch continues until 10 p.m. this evening for southeast Texas, the Piney Woods of East Texas, and the Golden Triangle. Keep an eye on the sky with the Texas Storm Chasers interactive weather radar on our website, texasstormchasers.com slash radar, or in the Texas Storm Chasers free mobile app. Texas Storm Chasers in the Google Play Store and in the Apple App Store. Again, we'll be back if there's a tornado warning. Otherwise, you can keep an eye on the sky with our radar. And hopefully you don't see me again today. Y'all have a good evening. God bless.